Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome to our Guess the Meltzer Star Ratings WrestleMania edition. We're going to find out. I kind of feel like, Larson, this is the ultimate test, given that it's the grandest show of them all, or whatever they call it. Stage. As to whether or not we have our Katra's line, how close we're getting to becoming those other No, 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 no. Are we going to become the wrestling observers, Steve? You know, given how controversial our star ratings were and how people were getting extra spicy in our comments for our star ratings, yeah. I feel like we are well on our way to becoming those other no, guys. No, no, no. The wrestling observers. No. The, the guys. The wrestling observers. So we're going to do things a little differently today. There's two days of WrestleMania, so we're each going to guess one of those days. Steve, going to guess day one. I'm going to guess day two. Are you ready, Steve? I am. I, I think so, yes. I'm trying to find my star ratings, and I can't. So, uh, yeah, I don't Oh, wait, wait. Did I find them? Oh, I found them. You found, found them. them. All right, here we go. Well, let's kick things off. Rhea Ripley defeated Becky Lynch in 17 minutes. That's what Dave had to say about this match. Even though Ripley was the heel, she was the overwhelming favorite. I didn't hear any boos for her. They know that Lynch was recovering from strep throat earlier in the week and had 102 fever a few days earlier. Being out in the freezing cold weather probably wasn't the best. Ripley had a wrist injury. They traded various big moves and near falls. The crowd picked up and they traded chops. Ripley missed a tackle and her shoulder went to the post. Lynch worked on her left arm. Lynch used the manhandle slam off the middle rope. Ripley blocked the manhandle slam, did a riptide into the buckles, and a second riptide for the pin. What did Dave give this match? I gave this match four stars. They're women, so Dave would give this no more than three stars, but he also said it was bad because of the weather or whatever. I think he gave it two and three-quarter stars. Dave actually gave it a higher score than you did. What? He gave it four and a quarter. What? Oh, my God. Steve is officially thrown for a loop. He doesn't know what to think anymore. Oh, 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 I'm dizzy. Larson, I'm dizzy over here. I don't know what I'm doing now. We just got started. I know. Oh, is he already all, 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 all a mess over there. Oh, oh no. All right. Yeah, you, you got no time to collect yourself. We're moving right on. We'll throw up. Next tag team ladder match course. Waller and Theory A-Town down won the SmackDown titles. Uh, Miz and R-Truth won the Raw Tag Titles in 17 minutes, 21 seconds. What Dave had to say this was also a great match. DIY was going for the belts, but Wall in theory tipped over the ladder and climbed up to pull down the SmackDown belts in 7 minutes and 33 seconds. They didn't push hard the idea that they were splitting the, the belts up, but there was a tease in the final days when they announced that the match continues until all four belts were pulled down. J.D. McDonough tried to help Balor up the ladder. New Day blocked. And Kingston used the chair shot on Balor. New Day tipped over the ladder, and he went through two tables. Priest used the razor's edge on Kingston onto a chair. Priest was about to win when R-Truth tipped over the ladder and climbed up and got both belts to win. What did Dave give this match? He gave the women four and a quarter. Said this was also great. That means he gave it more than the women four and a half stars. Four and a quarter. <laughs> oh, man. And when he said also, I guess it just meant the same thing. Yes, exactly. That's how I read it, too. Next, tag Ditch match. Bitch. Got Rey Mysterio and Andrade defeating Santos Escobar and Don Mysterio in about 11 minutes. That's what Dave had to say. This had some unique stuff. <laughs> Dominic had been recruiting Andrade for Judgment Day, but instead Andrade sided with Rey. True. That happened. Yeah. Dominic got his usual super heat. Andrade put Ray on his shoulders and then jumped off the top rope with Ray on his shoulders together with a double plancha. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> Escobar threw Ray into the post. Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson of the Philadelphia Eagles interfered to help Ray get the win with a splash. Very entertaining. What did Dave give this? Four and a half stars. You are super on tilt. Three and three quarters. What? Three and three quarters? He said it was super entertaining. Come well, on. Well, he said now. very entertaining. Very entertaining. Unique All stuff. Right. All right. Come on. I am so on tell. You've got me at the advantage now, Mayor. You got me at a disadvantage here, Larson, because I don't know. Look, right now, if I get a donut, I'll be happy. I'm just trying not to make it an absolute get, ass out of myself. Can't get minus. Either. I mean, that's not possible. I might get a dud. You could get a dud. All right, Steve, let's get it together with this one. We both agreed this next match stunk. 
Jay Uso defeats Jimmy Uso in 11 minutes oh, yeah. and 8 seconds. That's what Dave had to say about it. They had a tremendous video package built around them. Uh, sorry, around the them of, of being my brother's keeper. I think the theme he meant to put. Oh, yeah, okay. That before sense. the match, it was actually far better than the match itself. They did some mirror image spots, but creative failed in this match, and really, it was the only one in two days where they did. Jay had Jimmy ready for a super kick, but Jimmy begged him off, or sorry, begged off and wanted to make up. Nobody in the crowd bought this, which made Jay look like a total goof for falling for it. Jimmy said he was sorry. Fans were booing this. Then Jimmy gave Jay a super kick when he wa- wasn't ready and a splash off the top for a near fall. Jay came back with a spear and a splash off the top for a, for the pin. What did Dave give this one? Boy, oh boy. All right, all right, all right. So two is like, okay. Two is like, fine. And so it's going to be less than two. It'd be stupid if it was less than, if it was, if it wasn't, if it was not less than two. So I'm going to say, it sounded like you really hated this match. I'm going to say you went as low as one and a half. Cut that in half. Three quarters of a star. Wow. Wow. Boy, he's hot and cold today. Wow. I mean, it's, it's uh, maybe he had a he had a 12-inch glizzy beforehand, you know? Like the stuff he likes, he's really into. Stuff he's not into, he's not into at all. He's like, yeah, going to go. Yeah, wow. Okay. Who knows? Oh, man. Knows? O for City, Larson. All That's right. Where I'm at you got right three now. more chances here. Oof. You're you know, you got to be feeling so because far. we're going to ball up later on today. Yeah. So you're like, hey, if this is Steve's juice level, you're looking at you, dude, you're going to be getting me on the three point contest. You're going to get me on 21. And if we do another one of them, oh, I like that, that game to 10 we did last week. Yeah, that was one. good. That's good preparation for the actual season. Anyways, let's talk about this next match. Tag match. Jade Cargill, Naomi, Bianca Belair defeated Asuka Kairi Sane, Dakota Kai in about eight minutes. Dave said the following The crowd was dead early. Between the temperature and the last match killing the crowd, they had to start from zero. Naomi worked early and sold. Belair did a hot tag, pressed uh, Kyrie, and threw her on the other two. Then she sold to build the Cargill's hot tag. Fans chanted, we want Jade, and Cargill just destroyed everyone and was treated as very special. Cargill did a falcon arrow on Dakota. Asuka was supposed to blow mist, uh, but accidentally uh, hit Kyrie. But the wind took most of the mist, mo- most of the mist out of the path. Bel Air hit Oscar hard with her braid and hit the KOD on Oscar. Cargill uh, did jaded on Kai to get the pin. What did Dave give this match? Boy, there was a lot there. There was a lot of like sort of non-committal descriptions. And okay, all right, yeah, uh-huh. okay. uh huh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I fucked it. Um. I mean, it doesn't sound necessarily like he's crapping on it, just given the circumstances, but it's also a women's match. But he said they made Jade look special. Didn't really dump on that, so that's good. I'm going to say he went – it was a match and a quarter. I'm going to say two and a quarter. Oh, so close. Two stars. Fuck, dude. Two stars. All right, Damn it. You got two more shots here. Dude, this has been three matches that I've been within a quarter of a star. I know. I know. I think. Sammy. Zane. Won the Intercontinental title from Gunther in 15 minutes, 28 seconds. Dave said, this was mostly the Rocky movie (laughs) storyline. Gunther powerbomb Zane, who kicked I think Dave has got to be a big Rocky fan. You would think so. You would think he's a big Rocky fan. Uh, Gunther hit a haluva kick and Zane kicked out. Zane came back with a haluva kick, but Gunther kicked out. Gunther did two more powerbombs for a near fall. Gunther was taunting Zane's wife, who did a good job. Gunther did another powerbomb and a splash off the top. Gunther didn't even go for the pin and started laughing. Gunther did another splash off the top. There is a chant of one more time. Zayn made a comeback with a haluva kick, a brain buster off the top rope. Zayn did two more haluva kicks and got the pin to end the nearly two-year IC champion title run. What did Dave give this match? I feel like he liked this match a lot. He just sort of left out that he liked this match a lot and is going to let the star rating speak for itself, Larson. Therefore, I'm going to say he went four and a quarter. Oh, so close, Steve. Was it four and a half? Four and a half stars. I was going to fucking say that. Oh, Larson. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. 
Oh, Welcome to man. my world. I'm always a quarter star gonna, off, man. I was going to say, don't make this all about you. you it is all bitch. about me. <sighs> I was going to say four and a half, buddy. Go. But you did it. Come on, Steve. You got one more chance. You're 0 for oh, 6 no, so I only far. have one chance? Yes, no. it's the main event for night one. Rock and Roman defeating Cody and Seth in 44 and a half minutes. Wow. Long ass match. It was a long write up. I distilled it to a sentence. Oh, good. Thank you. WB pushed this as the biggest tag team match in WrestleMania history. I still go with the WrestleMania one main event that for uh, that for that one. That's Dave's comment, not mine. Yeah, right. But obviously, this is the biggest money drawing tag team match in history, partially due to the cold weather and partially due to this match just dragging early. You had this historical match and there was no heat for a long time. Honestly, the match in written form was far better than watching because all the spots made sense and built, but the first 25 minutes dragged badly. By the time it was over, it had delivered. Okay, oh, fuck. It had delivered by the time it's yes. over. You know what? By the time it was over, it delivered. I'm going to say he went with... Three and three quarters. Oh, there's a four. Was it four? It was four stars. Why didn't I say four? I was, dude, I had made the mouth. You I was going to say, I was going to do four, Larson. No. And oh, for, for Steve. Oh, for seven. You're, that was Larson territory, man. Where'd you go? You hiding your face in shame? Four and I was going to say four and a half for the other one. Wow, dude, that first match threw me off completely, yeah, Larson. I could tell. I they knocked. Tell. He knocked me on. He knocked me off my feet to start the match today. Really did. Wow. It really did. It was like Drew hitting Seth with the Claymore at the bell. I know, which is a great uh, a segue, Larson, because now we're going to talk about Noche oh. Dos Oof. of WrestleMania. That's right, night two. You are on the uh, the thing. So uh, here we go. Hot seat. First, that's the, that's the, the hot phrase seat. you're looking for, I believe. I can't do two things at the same time. Number one, I'm reeling from my epic. I could horrible tell. Performance. I could tell. All right, here we go. He right. sort of agreed with us on this one here. So we're kicking off with Drew versus Seth Rollins. And he says this same thing we did. This was a Brock Lesnar style match where basically go out fast and do nothing but big moves and kick out of every finish until after umpteen times doing a finish, it gets the pin. Both had very elaborate entrances. Rollins came out with a ton of people who looked like they were celebrating Mardi Gras. I like that there's no effort to educate himself on what they, they were. They literally said who they were. <laughs> uh, CM Punk was at ringside so co uh, doing commentary, so clearly there was going to be an angle. McIntyre hit the Claymore right away for a near fall. Uh, description, description, description. Rollins did a pedigree on the floor, was selling the knee. Near fall from a curb stomp. McIntyre tried another Claymore, but Rollins turned it into a power bomb. Uh, description, description. McIntyre hit his fourth Claymore of the match and got the pin. As he was leaving, Rollins was crying and mouth to McIntyre, you, to McIntyre, you effing deserve it. What? was the star rating he gave this so i'm trying to remember what he gave brock and roman at mania 34. and i feel like it was somewhere in between three and a quarter and four stars i felt like it was towards the lower i'm gonna say three and a quarter so close larson three and a half stars a half. uh next up bubby lashley and the street profits who may or may not be known as the Pride versus Carrying Cross and Authors of Pain. Before you get, get into this, I feel like either he's going to say lots of fun, three and three quarters, or too much nostalgia because of the Bubba Ray stuff and give it a low rating. That's why I make it a face because it can go either way. Anyway, sorry. Well, let's find out today. Yeah. I'm looking at the scene if there's any editorializing. Oh, buddy. Good luck with this. Bubba Ray Dudley was brought in as a surprise referee. They noted this was the first time Paul Ellering had ever worked at WrestleMania. All three heels continually hit Lashley with kendo stick shots. They then, then they used him on Dawkins and Ford. Dawkins was pinned, but beat, but F-Fab broke it up with a kendo stick. Scarlet attacked B-Fab. He gets it right there. AOP was about to do their super collider, but Lashley got in the middle. Okay, I'm trying to find anything that isn't 
description. I didn't look at this beforehand because I didn't want to ruin anything for me. And knowing myself, to especially today, I would have. Um, Cross shoved Bubba. Bubba put on his old Dudley glasses. Lashley speared Cross. Lashley and Ford spread Cross's leg, and Daw Dawkins did the was up spot. Bubba got a table and put Cross on it, but the table collapsed. He got another one, and Ford destroyed Cross with the kendo shots. And Ford came off the top with a high frog splash on Cross and Lashley pinned Cross. There is literally no editorializing in this whatsoever. It's all descriptive. Oh, goodness. You know, I gave it three and a quarter. I'm going to say he's going to go a little bit lower than I'm going to say three stars. One and three quarters. Wow. Right? I guess that's crazy. He like, no, it, he didn't say this match sucked. He didn't give one line. This match was terrible. This match sucked. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Evidently, he's not a Snoop Dogg fan because I kind of feel like Snoop Dogg made a lot of this match. Yeah. Bubba Ray did a good job. Did Bubba did, Bubba Ray I guess did Dave's not job. a fan of nostalgia. It could be, which is weird because he's old, and usually us old fellas are all about that shit. Yeah, sometimes. All right, man. Here Come we on. Go. Give me another one. Come on. Yeah. LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Styles took some very hard bumps. Good action. Mm. Lots of big moves. Mm. Knight at one point was biting Styles. I don't remember that. Neither do I. Styles wrapped Knight's leg, or maybe he saw an EFED. Uh, Styles wrapped Knight's leg around the post and drop kicked his knee into the post. Knight pulled the padding off the floor. But Styles' back body dropped Knight onto the exposed floor and went for a springboard 450. Knight got his knees up. Styles went for a Styles clash, but Knight kicked him in the face. The finish saw Styles go for the phenomenal forearm, but Knight knocked Styles off the top rope and hit the BFT for the pin. What star rating did he Dave Meltzer give this? He said, he said solid match, right? Is that the, the word? He said good action, lots of big moves. All right. It's kind of the only description he gave. Good so action, if two, two and a half moves. is baseline for average match, mm -hmm. you think good action would have to be above. Let's say he gave this one three stars. Three and a half stars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Must have been I mean, that's must, day two too. glizzy. Day two glizzy. So. Although, I mean, he must have got the glizzy during this match, not the previous one. There is like a little ch hunk of like tooth in that glizzy uh, bite in oh, the previous ouch. match. Ow. Yeah, that'll ruin the day. <laughs> How's your teeth doing, by the way? It, it still feels a little funky. Okay. Better Next though. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. There's a lot to say here. Let me see if the what how much is editorializing. We'll just kick off at the beginning. Zane showed Owens his IC title as Owens was backstage and told him that it's his turn now. Owens and Orton rode in together. Both beat up Paul early, including back suplexing him on the announcer's table. Both had Paul pinned, but the ref wouldn't count. It wasn't explained why, probably because if both pinned him, who would be champion? That You don't really need an They don't need to tell us that. They, they did it with their body language. Yeah, exactly. And plus, it makes sense. But they've done double in spots where the ref has counted in three ways for years. Okay, so Dave says that's this, this not been a problem in years. Finally, Owens and Orton went, out of, went at it. There was a Gatorade chant that was very loud. Uh, That's true. The fans, you can hear it on TV. Paul did a swanton on Owens and for and for splash on Orton. The fans booed heavily when Paul outpunched Orton, like they didn't want to see the celebrity outpunch the legendary star, even though Paul is the one with a boxing background. Hold on, does he mention the brass knuckles at all at this point, or is this pr before that came into play? I think this was before. All right, that sorry came to interrupt. Into play, I think. Uh, Orton power slammed Owens. Uh, Paul went for the buckshot lariat, but paused on landing like CM Punk did, and Orton power slammed him. Shade? Maybe? Uh, Orton did a draping DDT on both of them. Uh, let's see. Okay, Paul then pulled out the brass knucks and punched Orton, who kicked out. Paul hit Owens in the head and body with the knucks. Orton hit RKO on Paul and got the brass knucks. Instead of using them, Orton handed them to the referee. Orton set up the punt when the guy in the prime energy drink can costume pulled Orton off Paul. He unmasked as I show speed, a 19-year-old streamer and rapper. Orton gave speed an RKO on the table, which didn't break. Paul threw Orton into the post. Um, there's a lot of description here. 
Uh, Paul threw Orton out of the ring and hit a super high frog splash like Montez Ford level on Orton for the pin. This did seem to leave a Paul versus Orton match for the title on the table. What did he give this? Gosh, match? not a whole lot of it. It was a long ride up, though. Yeah. And usually that says something. You Maybe know? sometimes. I gave it three and three quarter. I'll say Dave gave it three and a half. Four and a quarter. Wow. He liked this match. Yeah, he did. What did I give this match? Anyways, next up. I Bailey. Four stars, I think. I gave it four. Man, I feel like my Kotcher is I need to stick closer to my star rating. Yeah, so Dave here. I guess so. That Rhea one really threw me for a It while. really did. All right, man. You got two more two more opportunities. See, but here going into this Bailey EO match, you know, mm-hmm. now knowing I feel like I have a little bit of advantage knowing that he gave Rhea and Becky such a high score. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, we That's- we liked the the EO Bailey match more than that one, so the potential is there pfft, even higher. Sky's the limit. Uh Bailey versus EO Sky. I feel like this is your best opportunity here. All right. I feel like this is your best opportunity here. Uh, this was worked far more like a stardom main event than a WWE bitch. Bailey came out being carried to the ring by young guys in masks. One not so young, AJ Kirsch. Yes. Phenomenal shape. I'm not saying he looks old. I'm just saying, like, you know, he's like kind of our age ish. Maybe a little bit younger. Yeah, he's probably a little bit younger than us, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, he's a Bay Area guy, too. He is. Anyways, uh, he says, it looked like it was the CMLL opening match crew. She got a big reaction. It wasn't overwhelming, but fans were chanting the NXT Bailey song to her. Bailey did a tope. Sky rammed her knee in the post and worked on the right knee. Sky came off the barricade into a Bailey to belly. Sky did a springboard drop kick, knocking Bailey to the floor, and then followed the moonsault off the top rope to the floor. Bailey used a sunset flip powerbomb spot for a near fall. Sky did two German suplexes and went for a moonsault. Uh, the crowd was really loud here. Sky hit a middle rope moonsault but missed the top rope moonsault. Bailey ended up winning clean in a match that had no interference, using a back suplex and elbow off the top, and the rose plant finish. What did Dave Meltzer give this? Bitch. So he said the crowd was loud. He likes when the crowd's engaged in the bout. Mm-hmm. He said this has worked like a stardom match. I believe he likes stardom. He's given a ton of Japanese women wrestling matches five stars. Very high ratings, yes. Um, we both thought this match was better than Rhea versus Becky. That got four and a quarter. I'll say four and a half. You've bested me today, my friend. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let's see if you can get two of these babies, okay? Because we're heading into the main event now, Larson. Probably the biggest match in the history of WWE. Oh, without a doubt. Maybe the history of wrestling. Maybe in the history of mankind. Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns to win what is now being called the Undisputed WWE Championship. They've stopped calling it the Undisputed Universal. Rhodes came out with wife Brandy. <laughs> Not his wife, Brandy. Rhodes came out. But uh, at least he didn't say with his buxom wife, Brandy. Yeah. The oh, crowd was going goodness. nuts at the start. The crowd was going nuts at the start. Okay, he likes fan engagement. That's good. <laughs> Reigns missed a charge and went to the post. There's Okay, there's a lot of... There's a lot I of imagine there's a lot of description. There's a long match. Reigns hit a drive-by and got booed for putting the table back under the ring. Reigns used a kendo stick and a bottle of Prime on Rhodes. They fought in the crowd. Uh, Rhodes suplex Reigns on a table in the tech area. Rhodes went for a disaster kick, but Reigns turned that into a power bomb. Um, okay, so we've got description. Wow, there's a lot of description here. And probably not okay, a lot I'll, just, I'll go to the overbook section here. Yeah. He was going for a third uh, crossroads when Solo Sokoa gave Rhodes the spike and put Reigns on the top, but Rhodes kicked out of that. So uh, Sokoa was pounding on Rhodes, and then he and Reigns did a combined spear and spike combo, but Rhodes kicked out again. John Cena then ran in, and the place went nuts. Cena hit the AA on Reigns and then did the AA on Sokoa through the Spanish announce table. This was retaliation with the idea that Sokoa was the one who ended Cena by giving him the spike after spike in his last match. Rock was out next. Rock and Cena just stood there while the crowd went nuts. Instead of going at it, Rock just gave Cena a rock bottom, and Cena was done for the night. Shield music played, and Rollins, dressed up as Shield member, came through the crowd. 
Rollins dressed up as a he did say as a shield member, but he is a shield. Member. I mean, it's like he went to Spirit Halloween and got the shield yeah. costume. Yeah. Reigns laid him out with a Superman punch. Undertaker's gong played and he came out. Undertaker choke slam rock. Reigns hit Rollins in the back with a chair as a takeoff in the shield breakup. Reigns went for a spear, but Rhodes hit a knee and then hit three crossroads and got the clean pin. What did they Wow, do? no editorializing at all. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god. Let me, oh, let me let oh, cuz he does a write up on on the on the on the the post match stuff. Okay, okay, okay. No, here we go. Here we go. Right. Here we go. I know some will be mad at this for being so high with all of that interference saying overbooked and stuff. Every situation is different. The stipulations of the match essentially promised everyone from the bloodline interfering, and the whole idea of the story of the match was about the massive amount of interference not getting the job done due to legendary backup. That was the actual match story. It had to happen, and to their credit, they largely limited interference for the rest the rest of the two shows. Not that there wasn't any, but was limited to the Rey Mysterio attack and the Logan match. Judgment Day didn't even interfere in each other's matches. It was pretty clear the That's pattern they were doing. Uh, JD came out during the tag ladder match. True. It was pretty clear the pattern they were doing with the interference. I think as just a wrestling match for excitement up and down the match, last year's bout was the better wrestling match, but this year was the better spectacle and far more satisfying in giving people what they had waited two years for. Um, hold on one second here. Uh, the story of the win itself was so big and the run-ins didn't help the match as a pure world title match, but did as a mania main event in getting rock scene undertaker make appearances, which the crowd loved as opposed to interference that keeps people off. Hmm. Uh, okay. Then he just sort of, okay. So here's his finishing viewpoint here. The only thing that could be said is that WWE got more popular over the past year with the direction they went in booking than they were one year ago. So Rhodes losing when viewed from a business standpoint was not a bad thing. And the fact is he was always going to win the title. It's possible his winning last year could have been great as well, but evaluating history, all the records that were set means you have to go with the idea that what they did ended up the right thing for business. And that's what wrestling decisions should be based on for the most part. So he gave last year's Reigns uh, Rhodes match four and a half. Okay. You know, there's a lot of friendos that were saying that was a five-star bout. I'll say he gave it five stars. So the one thing that I excluded from that write-up there was you could even go five stars just because of the story of the win itself was so big and the run-ins didn't help the match as a pure world title match because he gave it four and three quarters. I forget what I gave it. I gave it four and a half, I think. Yeah, we right? both gave it four and a half, I think. I'll be honest with you. I kind of regret not giving it five. <laughs> I kind of regret What not is that all about, five. Steve? Come on, stick to your guns. Uh, now, hey, you know what, man? I'm an introspective guy. I'm not above, I'm not above, you know, thinking about criticizing myself, about retrospection, about... Dude, you know, I, I watched the match. I gave it star ratings. <laughs> on to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yeah, hey, you did great though because you beat me. Honestly, you not, neither. Me. Hold on, neither of us did great. We both did one awful. of thirteen collectively. That is terrible. You, you know what it is. You know what it is here, man. It's our chakras. Our kach. Sorry, not chakras. Pfft, I'm about the Vulcan mythology. Kachras. Our kachras are aligning with the wrestling observer, not just in our thoughts and feelings, but with people going absolutely apeshit over our star ratings in the comments. Yeah. Now we need them to start going apeshit on Twitter. Did you hear what Steven Larson gave? I know. I mean, well, how come our star ratings aren't going up on Twitter first thing when the videos come out? Like his are like the other guys' star ratings are first thing Friday morning. What in the world? Come on. Come on. Come on. Anyways, uh, so that's going to do it for this epic wrestlemania or greater than episode of star ratings let us know what you guys thought about dave's star ratings in the comments below we'd appreciate yes. it until next time we'll see you around goodbye
Goodbye.